I've lived in Pine Springs my whole life. It's one of those small towns you see on television, like on Murder, She Wrote. We are supposed to believe there's a murder a week, which is odd, because in a small town like that, you kill one person off a week, and you'll run through the entire population in a few years. I always wondered why people thought it was a good idea to live in that town, or to spend any time around Angela Lansbury. Everywhere she went, someone died. Now, if that's not suspicious, I just don't know what is. Now, I'm not saying Pine Springs is a town full of murderers, mind you. Just aesthetically similar. Similar folk. A similar way of life. We did, of course, have that bit of unpleasantness with Sarah Winter and whatnot. Yes, okay. We've had a few difficulties. But the business with Sarah Winter was by far the worst. As far as I know, it was never really resolved. Evans in jail, of course. But I firmly believe in his innocence. His conviction is something I have always regretted. I wasn't clever enough to get him cleared. And I spoke to everyone involved, but the case was so damned convoluted, I couldn't prove a damn thing. Evan was the first person I spoke to about it all. If I had my way, Hollister, I'd put you in the electric chair myself and pull the lever. Don't do it. Put me out of my misery. Sorry, Hollister. You're not worth going to jail over. Though it would be fun to watch you twitch, you murderer. Let me see my lawyer. You got 30 minutes. Evan, you look well, all things considered. Yeah. Can I offer you a piece of salt water taffy? Mrs. Price made it. No, thank you, sir. Well, I'm going to have one myself. You all going to regret missing out, Evan. Mrs. Price makes damn good taffy. Sure I couldn't persuade you? I really don't want anything. You're lost. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm. Mmm, it is your loss, Evan. Mmm, 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 mmm. Now... If I'm to represent you at trial, I need your complete honesty. Did you do the murders? I'm not a murderer. I'm very glad to hear it. I have read your statements, of course, but it's good to hear it from your own mouth. Bullshit. Why would you believe me? Can I share a story with you? What? A story. You know what a story is, Hollister. I'm going to tell you one. It's about me, about 30 years ago. I was living on a Mulhill Drive... I had just moved into the small yellow house at the dead end, a 52 Mulhill Drive. My first very own private address away from mother. Granted, it was only three blocks away, but I lived on my own nonetheless, and I was excited about it. Now, at that time, 50 Mulhill Drive was occupied by an old trucker that everybody called um, Gubby Kane. Oh, everybody loved Gubby. He was one of those townies, you see, that can get away with being drunk all the time because that's when he tells the best stories. They're different each time he tells them, sure, but they're entertaining. Well, he was a character, and no one had a bad word to say about him. Except, the thing is, I didn't like Gubby. I couldn't tell you why at the time. I just looked at him and saw the devil. I wanted to keep it to myself, of course. Wouldn't want to be the hyena amongst giraffes. <laughs> it's the way things were then. So I kept my mouth shut, and all the while just plain not liking Gubby. What's your point? The point, Evan, is that five years later, the sheriff at the time found that Gubby had heads in his freezer. Very pretty young blonde heads. Girls. Not a one of them older than sixteen. What does this have to do with me? Nothing. The story's about me and how I am a very good judge of character. And when I look at you, I don't see the devil. 
Now, as I've said, I've read your statement, but I'd like to hear your story firsthand. It's going to take a lot of work to get the jury to buy it, and I want to make sure we cover everything. Okay. It started with Sarah's murder. I wanted to know who killed her because it sure as hell wasn't me, even though everyone thought it was. I wanted to know because everyone in town was staring at me like... like you looked at Gubby Kane. Especially her dad. But it wasn't just that. I wanted to know who killed her because I loved her. Evan, I do believe you when you say you didn't kill Sarah. But do you really think it's wise for us to bring up a murder you're not even being accused of when you're being charged with two other murders? But they're all connected. I'm not a murderer. But they're all connected. They're well. I'll shut up and let you finish. Now, why don't you tell me about what you know about Sarah's murders? Ralph and I were taking the girls to the Lumberjack Motel after the prom. Ralph McCann? The missing boy? He's wanted for questioning, too, you know. I thought you were going to shut your mouth and listen. So I was. Sorry, Evan. Sometimes I'm too fond of the sound of my own voice. Please continue. Now I'll button it. It's cool. Like I said, we were driving to the Lumberjack Motel after the prom. We bought some booze, and we were going to... You know. Is this no cure for the innocent? I love them. There's no better musician than Chris Lithy. Come on, what about Modoc Contorno? He plays circles around. Them. Dude, they're an idiot. They're the same guy. Modoc Contorno was just a stage name in a different band. No. He's right, Evan. Uh, you're supposed to be on my side. Since when are those the rules? They've always been the rules. You're just too drunk to remember. You are way drunker than I am. Speaking of drunk, we still have stuff, right? Plenty. We've got a bottle of Jack. Some Bacardi for you. Yum. Here we are, ladies. Man, the Lumberjack Motel is such a dump. Yeah, but it's cheap. I'm gonna head in and get a room from Mr. Webb. That guy is such a creeper. He's always staring at my ass. Why do you think I'm going instead of sending you girls? Be right back. Oh, it's you, Hollister. Good evening. I'd like a room, Mr. Webb. Two double beds. Yes, I'm sure you do. I've got the cash. Earn through nothing but old-fashioned hard work, of course. Yeah. Sure. Can I get the key, please? Certainly. Two double beds, smoking or non-smoking. What do you think? Room 11 is the only double where smoking is allowed. Here you are. Enjoy your stay. Oh, I will. Room 11, guys and girls. Let's go. And then we went to the room and partied for a while. Cass eventually passed out. Sarah went to the bathroom, and Ralph and I went outside to smoke. And that was when? Yeah. The last thing she said to me before she died was, I have to take a piss. All I did was laughter for breaking the seal. Breaking the seal? You know, when you drink, and then you have to pee. If you hold it in, you're fine. But if you break the seal and pee, you're going to be peeing all night. Oh. And that was the last thing we talked about. At least no one vomited. Yeah, at least. Anyway, Ralph and I went outside to grab the bottle of Jack from my car. Dude, I don't think you're getting that any night. Cass is out. She's such a freaking lightweight. What does she have? Like two beers and a shot? He's a devil. He's a devil. He's a devil in his own hometown. Excuse me, boys. Can I trouble you for a light? Yeah, sure. Thanks so much. So tell me, 
How is prom night? Excuse me? Well, it is prom night, isn't it? Haven't been stalking you, I promise. I just saw the tuxes and sensed that you were slightly intoxicated. I connected the dots. Yeah, it was all right. Good. Well, I should be going. Enjoy the full moon. It's particularly dangerous and beautiful tonight. <laughs> what a freak! He had a rockin' mustache, though. Hold up, Ralph. Is that Reverend Winter's car? Shit. Dude, you're so screwed. Shut up. How the hell did he know we were gonna be here? You really that surprised? He's like creepy protective. Probably put, like, a tracking device or something in a bra. A tracking device? You're such an idiot. Whatever. You're the one who's gonna die tonight if Reverend Winter finds it's you. It's not funny. Let's just get the jack and go back to the room. He can't break in. You won't have to if Mr. Webb lets him in. Could you stop? You're not helping. Look, I honestly don't care. I'm just messing. And I really have to pee. So you get the jacket, I'll meet you back in the room. Whatever. Sarah? Sarah! Open the door, Sarah. Open the door. Sarah? Sarah? Sarah, open the... Sarah, what the hell was that about? Why are the lights out? Hello? Cass? Who's there? Where's the damn light switch? Oh, my God. Sarah! Ralph! Cass, where are you? Sarah's hurt! Dude, what are you screaming about? Ralph, I think Sarah's dead. What? There was someone in here, and, and the room was dark, and... Look. Holy shit, man, where's Cass? I don't know. All right, what's going on in here? Sheriff Barker. Evan, what's all this screaming about? Oh, my God. Is that Sarah Winter? Ralph! Did you find her? Reverend, stay down there! Webb, don't let him come up here! Sheriff... This isn't what it looks like. I don't want to hear it, boys. Get on your knees and put your hands on but your hands. But we hand. didn't... On your knees! Just shut up and do what he says. And then he handcuffed us. He put me in his car and Ralph in the deputy's car. I could see Reverend Winter sitting on the stairs, crying hysterically with Mr. Webb. who we just looked pissed off that we were making him look bad. Eventually, I saw Sheriff Barker carrying Cass out. She looked like she was in a trance or something. And then they wheeled Sarah out on a stretcher. She was covered in hotel blankets. <laughs> Wrap it up. Well, I suppose we'll have to finish this another time. There's so much more to tell, though. I'm sure there is. But I'll be back to hear the rest as soon as they'll let me. In the meantime, I think I'd better talk to everyone who was there the night Sarah died. So, so you'll help me? I'm going to do everything I can, Evan. Thanks. You know, I think I'd like a piece of that taffy after all. <laughs>